About 10 years ago, there was a bit of an incident on my road. Now my road is quite steep, with an incline of about 10%, and I lived about halfway down. But one evening, someone had parked their car a bit further up the hill, and their handbrake failed. Their car then started to roll down the hill and ended up smashing into a few cars before coming to a stop. Now we can use Newton's laws of motion to work out what the car's acceleration was just after its handbrake failed and then use some kinematics to see what its likely speed would have been three seconds later as it smashed into someone's car. So where do we start with this problem? Okay. We'll make a couple of assumptions. First off, there is no friction involved as the car rolls down the hill. And at low speeds, we can neglect air resistance. And secondly, the incline of the hill remains constant at 10 degrees throughout the car's motion. Our object of interest is the moving car and it has a constant acceleration. And because its acceleration is non-zero, We would classify this as a non-equilibrium problem. Now, according to Newton's first law, a body at rest remains at rest, or if in motion, remains in motion at constant velocity unless acted on by a net external force. So because our car is accelerating, we need to work out what our external forces are on this car that are causing it to accelerate. And the best way to do this is to draw a free body diagram. Now the point of a free body diagram is to isolate our object of interest and only focus on the external forces acting on our object. Because according to Newton's first law, it is only the external forces, in other words, forces acting on the object from the outside, that will affect the object's acceleration. Internal forces, on the other hand, are forces inside the object, and these do not affect the object's motion. So, for example, when the car is hurtling down this hill, all the stuff bouncing around inside the car will not affect the motion of the car itself. The only forces acting on this car are the normal force exerted by the inclined road, and this always acts perpendicular to the plane or to the surface, and the gravitational force, which equals the gravitational mass of the car multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Now it's also convenient to place the x-axis along our incline and the y-axis perpendicular. This makes it easier to apply Newton's second law in component form to find the acceleration along the x-axis. And that's the goal of our problem here. So now, we can replace our gravitational force by its x and y components, leaving us with this vector diagram. And we can use trigonometry to find the adjacent and opposite force vectors from this triangle. We now apply Newton's second law in component form to obtain the acceleration along the slope. So the sum of the external forces along the x-axis is equal to the mass of the car multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and multiplied by sine 10 degrees. We also know that the car is not accelerating in the y direction. So the normal force and our force pointing in the opposite direction the mg cosine 10, is going to equal zero. But if we have a look at our first equation, we can rearrange this to make the acceleration along the x-axis the subject of the formula. And as we do this, you'll notice that the car's mass gets cancelled out. So it doesn't matter what the mass of the object is, the acceleration is always going to be the same. So our acceleration along the x-axis, or down our slope, is 1.7 metres per second squared, to two significant figures. This acceleration sounds quite realistic. Okay, 
So how about the car's speed after three seconds? Now we have a constant acceleration here and a problem that is one dimensional. So we can fairly easily apply the one dimensional equations of kinematics to solve this problem. And the four kinematic equations can be written like this. And you may have seen them in a slightly different form, but they still work the same. But the main components here are the initial and final velocities, the constant acceleration, the time, and the position of the objects, the final and initial positions. So given that we want to find the final velocity of our car, and we know that the initial velocity is zero, what equation would be best to use in this situation? So if we choose equation one, we can just plug in our known variables on the right hand side and out pops our final velocity. And we get 5.1 meters per second, which is roughly 11 miles per hour. <laughs> 